Hey guys, Rexasaur here and welcome to Update Monday. On the 28th of February 2022, which is the last day of this month, we are now one sixth into 2022 and what a year it's been so far. Um, last week was dominated by other things, uh, but let's not talk about that. Um, been doing a lot of Apex, been playing a lot of Warhammer 3, finally started Horizons um, Forbidden West, so it's been a week. Um, yeah, let's let's begin. Um, Apex, so last week started playing, well basically the Apex tournaments were all over, so we're just kind of just doing casual stuff. Um, the anniversary missions are up and around. I've done two out of the three that I want to do, so I'm only like ten knocks away from getting the final badge, which I'm probably going to do later today. Hopefully. <laughs> if I don't, I'm going to be very mad with myself about how crap I am at the game. Um, yeah, so that's fun. Um, I've been playing a bunch also with Hannah, um, who is my girlfriend, who recently got the game on her Switch, and we've been playing with um, Panda and Dragon um, and we actually managed to get so a second time playing for her on Friday and we managed to get our first win all together, uh, me, her and Dragon. It was a really really good mobile game um, and yeah it was really really fun um, she's getting the hang of it it's her first ever first person shooter, it's her first ever console first person shooter so there's a lot of movements buttons and things that someone who's in that games is finding very difficult and that's fair um, and yet she still managed to do enough damage to knock someone and also win us the game with scans that were very good she's playing Bloodhound um, so yeah it was good it was really, really good. Um, we got ourselves into very good positioning and I made some very good decisions in terms of when to push, when not to. Um, I did a very risky play at the end to decide to go into a... this. We ended up on King's Canyon and there's a section... God, where's the locations? It's near Cage where you've got like a big crevice um, or chasm. So you've got two overlooking parts and the circle's in the middle. So I was like, we're just going to go into it and like try and hide using the building the, the boulders and whatever rocks down below and we managed to make it work really really well um, and yeah it worked really good so we won that that was a lot that was my first 2k damage as Lobra as well so did pretty good um, meanwhile so that's Apex I'm enjoying it it's good fun um, that's all I have to say about that <laughs> uh, Warhammer 3 so I completed my first campaign as Demons of Chaos I did a conquest victory uh, or domination or whatever the fuck it's called but basically not only do you need to have 50 provinces fully under your control or under your vassals control you also need to ensure that they're, they're like all of the major factions don't exist anymore so my frustration with that is that by the end of the campaign, effectively, just before winning, I had all of everything done except for one faction, which was my vassal at that point, which meant I needed to wage a war against my vassal just to get the victory objective. Which, personally, considering they're my vassal, I feel is crap. I feel like you should be able to win that based on vassalage, because they've effectively decided to, you know, hierarchically be below you, so... That was frustrating. It took me over 320 turns or something like that. It was a long, long drawn out campaign. But the fact that I completed it, I did enjoy my time with it. I felt like the Demons of Chaos faction is really fun to play. And I didn't really understand why it was fun to play until I started my next campaign as Kislev. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really going well. <laughs> I'm about 70 turns in. This time I'm doing the Souls um, quest, which is the main quest line. I've got two out of four. Fucking hate playing as Kislev, not gonna lie. Not because the faction itself sucks, but because the AI around me sucks. For the last 50 turns, so 
as a human faction, um, I've got bonuses with diplomacy with all the others, so I've got a lot of trade, a lot of alliances with the dwarves and humans of the empire below, and also I managed to set up some trade with the Jade Kingdoms. Um, believe it or not, for the last 50 turns, my allies in the empire have asked me to join wars against the humans, the other empire factions. Currently, I am warding off all of the demon factions. Every single fucking one has come down from the plains to attack Kislev. Why? So, the annoying thing about that is that there are four Chaos factions. They all each have their own um, corruption. And as soon as the corruption reaches 50, you get minus 200 growth. And then it, it actually does go up when it gets to like 75 and 100. Minus 200 growth, minus 20 control, which is public order, and it causes you attrition damage. And there are four of these, plus then Chaos Undivided, which I think's got a slightly different thing. I'm pretty sure you get negative traits instead. But like, who the fuck thought that was a good idea? Who the fuck thought that was a good idea? So now basically, I'm holding up the entirety of the north of the human realm against all these factions coming from the top, whilst also trying to do the Souls Quest, which completely removes one of my armies, which I need to have all my elite troops in so that I could defeat the Demon Prince at the end to get a soul, which means I'm basically defenseless. I'm basically just fighting a war. The other thing about Kislev is that there's the whole, it's a really great mechanic story-wise. There's a big, you know, you've got the courts versus the, the church effectively, the orthodoxy versus the ice court. So there's a struggle going on there, which I managed to manage pretty well. When you gain supporters, it's not you can choose to confederate, it's you confederate full stop, which meant that all of my money just got drained completely into a huge amount of land, which to be fair they had taken by themselves, with zero defensive buildings, and zero good armies, and all the characters they've inherited have the fucking worst skill tree lines. Oh god, that's frustrating. Um, so that's that. Despite this, I see it as a challenge. I'm actually good to go in through it, it's going okay. The issue is that as soon as a battle shows up, I auto resolve or I save my game and quit out. <laughs> because turns out, I don't know if this is just because of this game, but I feel like it's been a thing for a while for me. I don't enjoy the battles in Total War games anymore. Now, it's not entirely true, because um, I've been playing... It, I th it completely depends what faction I'm playing, basically. I feel like when I was playing Three Kingdoms, I was really enjoying playing a... or even Skaven with Warhammer 2. You have a front line that just wears the battle, and then you have all of the missile stuff behind that are shooting things down around until they circle around and shoot things in the middle. I love that playstyle. It's fun. It's it's just my place, this is how I work. You can't do that in this game. Because no one has any kind of entity mass in terms of if I compare this to say Rome, even Rome 2, even Attila, when units sort of clashed, they clumped up and they stayed like that the entire fucking battle until one of the sides routed. Um, this is no longer a thing. Now, they kind of just pass through each other and get to your, like, to your missile line that's supposed to be there to support them. Which is just really annoying. And I hate it. Um, which is why I don't like playing the battles. And then on top of that, the battles are really, really quick. Because all the units do a fuck ton of damage. Unless you're playing against Nurgle because they have a fuck ton of health, it kind of negates that whole fuck ton of damage. Um, people break really quickly. It feels like armor doesn't matter in this game because a lot of things deal just 
magical damage anyway, so it just bypasses armor or has armor piercing, so it doesn't really matter. Magic is just apparently just armor piercing anyway, so hey ho. Um, yeah, it, it feels like the balancing in this game is very off when it comes to the battles, which is why I just tend to auto resolve it because I enjoy the campaign aspect of it a lot. I enjoy the I'm not gonna say geopolitical like aspect of it, but basically like trying to get diplomacy going, trying to ensure that all the factions are like my allies and that I can use their armies and stuff. Get building the outposts, I really like that mechanic of getting outposts to get mercenary or not mercenary but like allied legions in. It's really really cool. But the a the fact that the AI just always goes for the player is fucking bullshit. And I feel like it worked with a Chaos Demons faction because I started in a section where the only point where I could be attacked was, um, how do I explain the map? There's like a massive jutting land mass, which you can just invade or ally, which is what I did, which meant that your rear was always safe, which meant they only came from like the north or the south, and you could just put one army on each and just go around. That's what I did. I sort of enveloped the entire land. I had two or three go down into Gislev and down. And that was easy. That was fine. That's what I need to do about it. With Kislev, they've got like 17 points of entry. It's impossible. And then it's when you've got five different factions and not two trying to go against you, because the great thing with the Demons of Chaos is that f literally over half of the other factions are demons, which means you've got like buddy points with them unless you decide to go to war with them. So I basically just knocked them out one by one, or I didn't knock them out at all. In the like, so I allied and vassalized eventually Corn um, Scarbrand's faction. Scarbrand had taken out Nakari by that point because he's not going to attack me because I'm a demon. Um, Zinch, I then got. I think that was the last one I got rid of. But basically, they just sent like one army. They were too busy with the J Kingdoms, and um, Nurgle got killed very quickly because they tried to attack me, and I just sort of sent dudes up to kill them because they they start nearby. With Kislev, I had to like ensure that Kislev was united. I had to take out the orcs in the mountains. I've actually, not even fucking kidding, I'm in the Badlands right now with Kislev, which is the other side of the fucking dwarven mountain chain. I've got one army who is really fucking elite at this point because they've taken out Skaven orcs and now they're taking out ogre kingdoms on their fucking own because the rest of the fucking thing is just mush with demons. And I, story-wise, if you're looking at this from a purely historical, historical, like, in the law, makes fucking sense. <laughs> because that's literally what Kislev did, the entirety of the Warhammer universe, was try to prevent chaos from coming down. Um, but it's not fun to play. I want to do a counter-attack, I want to be able to go up. I literally sent an elite, oh my god, this fucking, this is the other thing about the AI. I sent an army I had made, really elite army, had ice guards and stuff, which are like the tier 3 units. Um, I took one of the settlements, and as soon as I took it, I got attacked by a demon. And I was like, fuck. Defended and killed. So I literally manually played this battle, killed the faction leader of the demons of chaos. And literally, as soon, and I lost quite a bit in there because he's a powerful dude and a very good army, very good stack. And I was, I'd just taken a settlement that was a full stack and a walled settlement. So it was like, fucking hell, okay. At least I get a turn to replenish now. No, no, as soon as that battle was ended in the end turn, another army came in, and I was just like, well, I can't attack this because I'll die, so I'm just going to siege out, hope to get another army up. The army didn't... I, I got sidetracked by something. There was another army, or I think it was the one of the Norsecan factions came in. And that's when all of the demons came in. Slanesh and Khorne had stacks, and half stacks, because most of their stacks aren't even stacks, they're ten units, just sort of dotted around raiding. This army went from being 20, so my army went from defending with a whole like 20 stack unit, which were all depleted, literally the counter went to zero on the siege, because they didn't siege, there was literally like 15 armies, not literally, there were more like 5, which is still a lot. And my faction, my, my lord was just losing health from attrition continuously and they weren't attacking. I was like, what the fuck is wrong with this AI? Why is it not just attacking? I've got no garrison because I've lost it in the previous fights. I've literally just got a 100 health wizard lord, which is shit in combat. And you're not attacking, you've got literally so many allies. I don't understand what the fuck's wrong with this AI. They fucked it up somewhere. Um, it's so bad. It, it makes just the worst and annoying decisions towards the player. And when it makes decisions that just doesn't make sense 
Um, Corruptions is a broken mechanic and needs to be reworked massively. Um, just have a kit. Like, I understand that each Chaos God has a different, like, corruption. It makes sense when you're fighting the other Chaos Gods, but for the human players, it just means that you have five different co sources of the same fucking corruption that does the same thing, except they don't do the same thing because they stack. If you have all five Chaos Corruptions, you get minus 1,200 growth. Like, what the fuck are you going to do against that? And your corruption, anti-corruption buildings only give you, like, plus two corruption, or minus two, I guess, corruption. So it's like... Okay, I'm fighting, and, and then you get to the whole problem of the thing, the rift. The rifts that are in the fucking... I'm just going on a massive rant at this now. Um, the rifts that go up, every, like, 30 turns or so, you get rifts, and that's why you get to the realm of chaos. But the rifts give you fucking corruption. So it's like, you can't win. Because unless you get rid of the rifts straight away, which means you need to have armies in your fucking territory because they just spawn willy-nilly, it's not like, I got rid of the rift, it's never coming back. It's, it's going to come back every fucking five turns. And so you have to have armies that are doing nothing during the actual campaign just in case the rifts come back, so you can take them out, so you don't get corrupt, so you don't lose growth, so you don't get... I don't have... I'm 70 turns in, I don't have a level 5 settlement. When I was demons, at level 7, at turn 70, I had 3 level 5 settlements, because corruption don't... Chaos don't give a shit about its own corruption, so I could just keep going. It's so dumb, it feels like a... a like, it just doesn't feel like a working mechanic from a human perspective. They need to either change it completely when you play as a human faction, or they just need to have it so that the effect of corruption is just chaos when you're playing human, and then you can have your willy-nilly, oh, Nurgle versus Zendra versus Slaanesh versus Korn when you're playing the demon factions, because it is fucking broken, and it is dumb. I'm not going to go into any more details into the other things that are going on in terms of, like, playing as a demon faction because so i played the demon's chaos i'm playing as nurgle as well i can tell you that i'm not enjoying my time as nurgle either but i'll tell you that otherwise because I've, i'm literally like 10 turns into that so it's not really fair um but yeah so that's my rant at fucking warhammer 3 which is uh like the issue with games like that is that they have so much potential but they fucking don't listen to any feedback um i was watching a legend of total war um, stream and he was telling us that he's he's removed himself from the creators discord um, because they just don't listen they throughout the entirety of the early access phase they were asking for all the content creators to give them feedback and they did and they listened to no one so it's like are you going to implement that in the next patch are you going to tell us what you're going to do with that feedback rather than just ignore and then uh you know there's like very small balance changes that could have happened um Oh my god, the game is just like, it's such a frustrating game. Not because it's a bad game, but because it's so on the cusp of being a good game. It's very frustrating. Um, yeah, so there we go. There's your rant for Warhammer 3. Now let me rant about <laughs> Forbidden West. Except I'm not going to, because I'm fucking loving the game. Um, I had a problem with it when I started. I, it's, I, I intended to play uh, Zero Dawn again but I didn't, and I feel like that's on me. I should have done that, because when I was thrown back into Forbidden West, I, it felt really weird, like the controls was weird, the the things that they were telling you to do was weird, the movement was weird, the climbing was weird, and I was like, I, what is happening? And I'm, I think, what had happened is that I was so used to the excellence that was um, Ghost of Tsushima's movement, combat, uh, abilities and all that, that I'd completely forgotten what Horizons was before, so I wasn't really in enjoying it in terms, of, and then because it's a sequel, it has to go through, it still has to go through all the tutorial for those people who've never played it before and who've getting this for the first time because it's a new game and it's one of the big you know, pinnacles of the PS5. So I understand the need for the tutorial, and I felt the tutorial was really lacking. I felt like there was, story-wise, it kind of made sense, but you kind of knew where it was going, and it was kind of like, eh. Um, but it, and also the tutorial, the whole section, it does last a while. It's like two to two and a half hours long. It's very stale. Um, it's very stop-start. There's not really much going on. It's not open world. As soon as it opened up, 
it then started to pick up and I was like, oh, okay, I understand now, I feel much better. And then as soon as you actually get to the Forbidden West, um, which does take, like, I think I'm eight or nine hours into the game, I've I've been in it for like an hour, so then the game's properly opened up now for me, and I feel so much better with the game, I'm really enjoying it, the combat's really nice, the updates are made, it's really nice. Um, I feel like there's a lot, though. I feel like they've added a lot to the game, and that's not a good thing. Um, not because it's a bad thing, but just because it's not a good thing either. Sometimes keeping it the same is good, <laughs> because... Um, there's just so much, and I feel like the first game made a really good way of like slowly building up your abilities, slowly building up all the different types of weapons and what you could use, and here it's like, considering the tutorial was so lackluster, and not in that it was lackluster, but just because it was so like finicky, and you, you know, oh this is how you attack, <laughs> um, it then just pushes you into all this stuff without really telling you all of this stuff. It's like, oh yeah, remember all these weapons? Remember all these armors? Remember all these abilities? It's like, f it would be nice to have a tutorial for all this as well, or just a reminder or a slow burn into it. But you don't get that. Um, but despite that, the story is, once again, really the, 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 the thing that is just knocking the game through it's great the story's really really good um i feel invested again um at the first i was like i'm not invested into any of these characters like i remember these characters very very faintly but i don't really know and then as soon as you get into the actual game and you start it's like oh wait i remember why yeah you're important i remember i'm invested in you i'm invested it's all good um and yeah overall i'm enjoying my experience with forbidden west I'm very happy that I'm enjoying my Forbidden West experience because I thought I wouldn't <laughs> when I started the game. But my friend Josh was continuously like, you need to play this, like, just, just play through it, you'll get through it. And I'm like, yeah, no, I did. It was good. Um, it is good. I'm just really enjoying it. I'm looking forward to seeing where the story goes. I'm expecting it's going to be a long story as well, which is really nice. Um, I'm not that far through at all. I've only just sort of started the journey, basically, and already there's a lot of things going on, there's a lot of connections. Um, one of the first big things you do is you, you get to a town where this guy sort of represents the workers, and he's kind of, because there are um, a new type of machine around, they've stopped all work because it's too dangerous, and then you, really, you sort of go through the whole motions, and then you realise that he, because of his greediness, cause this to happen so the blame's good on him he gets fucking killed he doesn't get killed he gets kicked out and exiled um but it's really it's really well written that whole section and you can see it happening you're like okay so i'm like part investigator savior that kind of stuff it's really really good it's really well done um and and that's good that's all i could ask for but yeah that's horizon forbidden west i'm really enjoying it that's probably what i'm gonna be playing after <laughs> Um, yeah, that's about it. That's that's what that was a massive rant. Have a have a big ranting update Monday for you today. Apparently, um, gonna play some Apex tonight. It's gonna be good. That's about it. That's all I have to say about that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Play your games. Oh, little bit forgot. Yesterday we watched the first of the Born trilogy. Um, I don't think we're going to watch the rest of the other two Bourne films. Um, it was okay, <laughs> the first one. Um, I can see why it kicked off a franchise, maybe. Um, because it was, especially for like 2000 and something, it was like, eh, you know, it's, yeah, sure, it does things differently, it's not your typical spy film. Um, one thing that it does do good, which my brother did point out, is that during the car chase scene, none of the cars exploded in a flurry of explosions, because it actually had some aspect of realism to it. It does feel like a very gritty film, a uh, gritty, like, spy assassin drama thing, I don't know what the fuck you want to call those, um, action thriller, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next movie, see what happens. I, I, pre I have seen them before, but I don't remember them at all, so... I don't know if it's just that I've never seen this one or. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. 
Anyway, that's that. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a very good week ahead of you, and I will speak to you next week.